In today's video, we will talk about measures of variability. Recall that uh, we spoke about measures of location in the previous video, which answered the question about where the data might be located, right? We might also want to be interested in how the data is located about the specific measure of location that we choose. Statistics and numbers that help us understand how uh, data is spread about a given measure of location would be called a measure of variability. It is very important to note that the choice of the measure of variability will depend on the choice of a uh, measure of location that we have under consideration. So if we have the measure of location as a mean, the corresponding measure of variability will be different from what it would be if we had to start with uh, the median as our measure of location. We begin by studying the standard deviation from the mean, which is going to be the measure of variability corresponding to the sample mean. Suppose we have sample data given by x1, x through up to xn. We will call this set uh, capital X. And the sample mean is defined as the sum of all the xi's divided by n, which is the sample size. The goal now is to find a measure that helps us calculate the deviation of the data points from the sample mean, which is x bar. A naive approach is as follows. Uh, we first uh, calculate how each point uh, varies or deviates from x bar. And we note each of these individual deviations. We note them as x1 minus x bar, x2 minus x bar, all the way up to xn minus x bar. Now to get the variation, we just add up each of these individual deviations uh, together. That is, the total variation is now going to be the sum of x1 minus x bar plus x2 minus x bar plus x3 minus x bar all the way up to xn minus x bar. We call this a naive approach because it has problems. We mention some of those below. The first being that we'd want the measure of variability to be a positive number. And uh, the way this sum is added, it might not always be a positive number. Secondly, uh, we have the possibility that some xi minus x bars could be negative, while the other xi minus x bars could be positive. And as a result, we might have some cancellations going on in this sum. This will uh, very likely give us the impression of a small variation even if uh, uh, the variation is large. And this is generally the case when the xi's are symmetrically distributed about the sample mean x bar. One way to resolve this issue is to work with uh, step two in a corrected form, which would be to square all the individual variations and then add them up together to get a measure of uh, variation. That is, uh, variation is going to be uh, the sum of x1 minus x bar squared plus x2 minus x bar squared all the way up to xn minus x bar squared. While this step takes care of maintaining the positivity of uh, the measure of variation and making sure that there is no cancellation between the terms in the sum, this is still not a very good measure. The reason being that the size of the data set can affect the size of uh, the calculated measure of variation. Uh, we'd like the measure of variation to be in some ways independent of the size of the data set. And to take care of this issue, we will divide out uh, the variation that we have calculated by some number that is close to the size of the data set. As a result, we come to the first important definition uh, in this section, which is the sample variance denoted by S squared, 
which equals 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of the squared individual deviations from the sample mean. You might have already noticed uh, that we are dividing out by n minus 1 instead of n. And there is a very good reason for that. Uh, it is to make the sample variance s squared an unbiased estimator for the population variance, which is typically denoted by sigma squared. Uh, we will talk a lot about unbiased estimation over the course of this semester. But for now, uh, let's just take this definition uh, in good faith. A second consideration to note is that the units for the sample variance S squared are the squared units for the X size, the data points. And to take care of this situation, we take the square root to end up with the sample standard deviation, which is denoted by S, which has the same units as the data values X i. Finally, the Validity of sample variance as a good measure of variability would depend on the mean or the sample mean being a good measure of location. And we know that the conditions under which the sample mean is a good measure of location is under the data being symmetric, unimodal, and uh, the non-existence of outliers. We now move on to talking about the interquartile range as a measure of uh, variability for the sample median. So recall that the first quartile was defined as the 25th percentile, the second quartile was defined as the 50th percentile, and the third quartile defined as the 75th percentile, right? In this setting, the interquartile range is going to be the third quartile minus the first quartile. This is the range of the middle 50% of the data. Pictorially, the interquartile range is identifying the region in red, which is the region between the two quartiles, uh, Q1 and Q3. It's important to note that uh, like the median, the interquartile range is also robust to minor changes in data and to outliers. Now summarize uh, the statistics that we have studied so far. We have uh, studied the statistics corresponding to location, which are given by the sample mean, the sample median, the quartiles, and the percentiles, right? And we have also studied uh, statistics corresponding to variation or the spread, which are given by the sample variance or the sample standard deviation, the interquartile range, and the actual range, which is the maximum inside the sample minus the minimum inside the sample. We will use this information to now define outliers. So uh, the upper fence corresponds to the largest data value less than uh, the third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And the lower fence is going to be the smallest data value greater than uh, the first quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. An outlier is going to be a data point that lies outside of these fences. That is a data value that is either larger than the upper fence or smaller than the lower fence. We finish up this video by talking about box plots, which provide a very succinct pictorial representation of uh, summary statistics corresponding to a quantitative data set. A box plot looks as follows. The black line is the axes for the data values. We then identify the third quartile, the first quartile, and the median. We have the upper fence, the lower fence, and the outliers, which lie outside of the fences. The red region is the middle 50% of the data, and the length of the rectangle is the interquartile range. So to summarize very quickly what we have done today, we've spoken about the standard deviation as a measure of variability for the sample mean, uh, the interquartile range as a measure of variability for the sample median. We then spoke about summary statistics 
outliers and combining all of this information into a pictorial visualization which we called the box plot. This is all for now. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and I will see you around.